with impressive construction and a source of history as well. It was built in 2,000 years, over 60 acres of land. So the wall, the statue, the obelisk, all the stones have part of the history of Egypt, starting from the Middle Kingdom and ending by the Ptolemaic period. The king who succeeded Hatshepsut and added important additions to the developing temple was King Tutmos III. According to the deeply rooted feud between the two, he surrounded his obelisk with walls up to the ceiling of the hall which had together with columns so that her writings on the obelisk couldn't be seen. He has also constructed a lot of chapels in the court of Tutmosis the first and a new pylon called the Sixth Pylon and a hall with a group of columns in between the Sixth and the Sixth Pylon. Later, he added two obelisks to the ones who were erected by his father in front of the fourth pylon. The total dedication of the pharaohs to their gods is unmatched compared to any other civilization in the ancient world. King Tutmosis III also erected two obelisks in front of the fourth pylon, one of which still stands, while the other was taken to Rome. He was proud with his double rooms of records situated behind the sixth pylon. Their most significant remaining are the two beautiful granite pillars which represent the two halves of the kingdom. One has a relief of the lotus or the lily flower, symbol of the south of Egypt, and the other ends with a papyrus flower, symbol of the north. This is just a part of the marvelous collection of monuments in Karna Temple. Welcome back. It's no secret with all of us 